Welcome everyone, let's talk about urban planning. So today we ask, how do global economic structures shape the everyday experiences of people uh, that live in cities? Okay. And to answer this question, I've invited my um, my speaker, Sander van, uh, van Lennon from the University of Groningen to tell us how the global financial crisis shaped austerity policies in Ireland. And of course, how these policies affected young people in disadvantaged neighborhoods. Um, and we're also going to look at what can we learn from the Irish case in this um, particularly. Sander, welcome to our episode. Thank you. Happy to be here. Tell us a bit about the importance of your study, because some years have passed since the global financial crisis, but well, consequences still endure and lessons are still to be learned. Yes, um, exactly. Um, indeed, the, the global financial crisis is more than a decade um, away from us. The period of austerity implementation is also um, almost a decade away, decade away from us, at least from the most um, direct implementations. But I think it is important to uh, remember that those uh, transformations that have been brought in, the transformations to policy, but also to public space, um, the way uh, cities are being managed, the way uh, services in cities are being financed, um, are still with us um, today. Um, and they kind of put the groundwork of what you know future urban development, future urban governance uh, looks like. So therefore, I think it remains important to, to study what happened in those years. Um, but of course, the more we, we move away from that period, it becomes important to, to investigate how that shapes where we currently are and how it shapes urban possibilities now and in the future. Mm -hmm. What was missing uh, specifically in the research that you wanted to understand? Yes, when I started this research, which was already back in uh, back in 2013, so that's uh, it was also quite a while ago, um, Ireland was in the middle of um, had this harsh, this fierce austerity regime being uh, being implemented, um, and at the time there was a lot of attention to um, the impact of austerity in the crisis on young adults. Uh, but what I noticed was that it was specifically on young adults that you know, more or less had opportunities available to them. So a lot was about students that um, had an outlook on having a, having a good job, uh, suddenly working you know, in jobs that were considered um, not so good for someone that studied, right? So less highly skilled, skilled jobs and, and people moving abroad again, people not being able to find houses or not being able to, to buy houses anymore. Um, and within this whole narrative, I started thinking, but what about young adults that maybe were not so fortunate to begin with, that maybe never really had those positive outlooks that, uh, for example, students, um, students had. So that's when I decided to focus on, uh, well, more youth that experiences more poverty, more social exclusion. And being a geographer, I, of course, also wanted to add a spatial component. And that's why I decided to look at disadvantaged urban neighborhoods and ended up studying two of Ireland's most disadvantaged neighborhoods, so Nocnini in Cork and um, Ballymun in, in, in Dublin. Um, and I think in that, what I was interested in or, or, or kind of struggled with during my studies is that, of course, on the one hand, you can go into these neighborhoods and, and, and ask what, what, what's changing in people's life, uh, you know, what services close, what things they struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis. And that gives you one part of an understanding of what austerity does in urban spaces. Uh, but on the other hand, I, I felt it would be a bit flat if you do this without investigating at the same time where these austerity measures come from, with mm -hmm. why they are being implemented um, at the national scale, at the, at, at the municipal scale, but also how they relate to, to global financial um, mm -hmm. developments, political and economic development. So I think my two challenges were to see that kind of overarching change in relation to the everyday. Um, and the relation of the everyday to the overarching structural developments. Um, and on the other hand, to to look into this this group that, as I felt, was not getting um, enough attention yet and was kind of being a bit undersnowed by the attention of more middle class youths that had their opportunities um, reduced perhaps to what they uh, what they mm -hmm. expected without downplaying the importance of that dynamic too, of course. Sure. Promising. So let us know about the most important highlights, the findings of your study. Yeah, so um, I think one of the most important highlights, uh, both of this paper, but also the, the wider project as a whole, is that um, when you look at the everyday influence of austerity in disadvantaged urban neighborhoods in Ireland, um, and especially young adults, 
Uh, you, you see there are three main spheres in which um, austerity is being experienced. That's work and income. So basically people getting less income, either from work or welfare. That's housing, um, especially people trying to move out of their parental house and not being able to find affordable or suitable um, housing and all the consequences that has. And the other is a decline in service availability or at least a restructuring in service availability in these neighborhoods, uh, which means that either people uh, cannot access training, but also not access, for example, sport or music facilities that they used to have access, um, access to. Um, what I then did, um, so I got these three main spheres out of um, interviews with young adults from Noknahimi in Cork and Ballymun in, uh, in Dublin. Um, I then started looking what happened in these spheres at both national policy and how that was related to preceding policy and um, uh, how that was related to um, austerity and these overarching uh, political and economic develop developments, such as the global financial crisis, um, the involvement of the IMF, uh, the European Central Bank, um, in the name of the Troika in, uh, in, 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 um, in Ireland, and started to um, yeah, kind of see through how these different skills relate to each other. So, so how does what happens at a global scale relate to what's being implemented at the national scale, and ultimately how that um, translates into what happens in the neighborhoods and then there shapes the everyday livelihoods, um, experiences and practices of young, um, mm -hmm. young adults. Mm -hmm. So we, you have mentioned uh, in a nutshell, less income, less housing, the decline in service availability and you know, some connection between national and the neighborhood. So tell us a bit about in all this, some policy consequences or community led initiatives, individual action. So in practice, what does that mean? Yeah, I think that in practice, um, sometimes you see that urban planners or other professionals that tend to deal with issues at the local scale. You can, apart from planners, also think about social work organizations or medical organizations. Um, and I've also seen that in other research projects myself. Uh, can learn from this that um, it is always important to connect what's happening at national and international scale to what they see at, uh, at the local level in order to understand how their local interventions um, might interact with, for example, a national austerity program being, uh, being handed out, uh, being implemented, or um, international changes in, for example, job market structures or um, 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 economic fortune. So how can local interventions, can they kind of be like a shock, um, a shock buffer, a buffer to these uh, more larger scale developments, or will they amplify them? Mm -hmm. um, and I think what also can be interesting, both in practice and in research, is to, at some point, turn it around. So what I did in this paper was to kind of work down skills, right? So I started at the international level, so, uh, investigate how it influenced the uh, national uh, government decision and how that influenced um, restructuring in the neighborhood and how... Um, youth in the neighborhood uh, responded to that and experienced that. I think in the future, we can also think about if there is a local intervention. Uh, for example, here in the, the area, there is um, um, a new um, elderly care cooperative started. Uh, in what ways can these type of initiatives start to work upwards? You know, can they, for example, set an example that might end up influencing national policy, maybe eventually international rela uh, relations between care providers, uh, international learning, or maybe they might reshape relationships between people and institutions that will ultimately work through these different skills and also start to in, um, influence other neighborhoods, other cities, uh, other countries um, as well. And I think I, try, I started to tease out this so-called um, embedded comparative approach in this paper as one framework in which, um, uh, which this can be uh, investigated, uh, both as analysis, right, to see how what happens locally relates to what happens nationally and internationally, but also perhaps as uh, as an as an approach and a tool for uh, for change to think about how we can do something at the local scale. Um, I noticed that with my students um, quite a bit, right? They 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 might have um, a desire to implement change, but then sometimes feel restricted by kind of the um, the local influence that a planner can have. And hopefully this can be a bit of a tool to think about what can happen locally that maybe can have wider uh, reverberations uh, throughout mm -hmm. cities and, um, and the world. 
Perfect. You mentioned a lot about the future. So let's look a bit into the future, but academically. So what should be the focus yeah. of future research? Other groups than young adults or students? But you're a geographer, so other special contexts. Yeah. So what's ahead of us? Yeah, I think what I would really like to do, this is part of one of my challenges to think about um, what I would call a spatial political economy of everyday life. Um, political economy of everyday life is a discipline that really tries to connect what's happening um, in global political economy, uh, economies to everyday, mainly household experiences and practices. Um, and I think I'm really interested in uh, what that looks like um, or what type of geography there is to that. So how does do space and place um, influence um, this relationship between the stru structural and the um, and the everyday. So ways in which I would like to expand that in the future is, for example, uh, com making a comparison between uh, different welfare states, for mm -hmm. example, comparing um, like a maybe traditional uh, social democratic welfare states like the Netherlands with a more um, liberal welfare state like Ireland with a more southern conservative uh, welfare state in southern Europe and maybe post-socialist welfare states um, elsewhere to see how for example, the notions of culture or kind of remnants of how things used to be organized or are currently organized influence in what way global political um, developments touch down in the cities and the neighborhoods in which we live mm -hmm. and thereby shape and uh, inform uh, the things we experience every day, the things we do every day um, and how that transforms in a changing world. Mm -hmm. Some important tips for future research. Yep. Uh, Sander, um, if we could shorten our more or less 10 minute conversation in one or two sentences, what would it be? Let me think about that for a few seconds. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's not an easy one. No, and happy is not life, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think there is, um, let me see, there is two, um, two lessons that I, that I really want to stress. That is, we cannot understand um, everyday experiences and everyday practices uh, without also understanding what's happening at uh, the level of national politics and international um, economies. So in order to get a full grasp of what's happening in our cities, we need to understand both. And even better, we need to connect both. Um, and in my paper, I um, try to make that argument using austerity as an, um, as an example to see how um, kind of roll out, roll back, roll out neoliberal neoliberalism processes at the national scale and the local scale um, interact with each other mm -hmm. uh, to create locally specific outcomes. Okay, Sander, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. For those who are watching us on YouTube, okay, you can find all the resources, all the materials of this conversation, including the article that served as base to our conversation on the Let's Talk About Urban Planning episode. You can also listen to this episode alternatively in uh, podcast uh, platforms. You can subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Twitter at Cogitatio LTA.